So um, I'd like to welcome you to Case-Based Learning on Fire. And I would like to introduce your first speaker, Mark Bronstein, who will take it away and introduce you to your other speakers. Well, hello, everybody. Um, let me uh, share my screen. Um, hi, I'm Mark Bronstein. I am uh, an emeritus professor of health informatics at Georgia Tech and a visiting scientist at the Australian eHealth Research Center in Brisbane, where our other two speakers are located. Uh, we're collaborators on this project. The uh, second speaker will be Dr. Ben Barry, who's head of the St. Lucia Clinical Unit at the University of Queensland Faculty of Medicine. And our last speaker, who's Familiar to most of you already is Dr. Jim Steele, who's the team leader for Health Data and Fire at the Australian eHealth Research Center. The Australian Health Research Center is part of CSIRO, the Australian National Research and Development uh, Organization, part of the Australian government. Um, many of you may be surprised to, to know that case-based learning, something you associate with Harvard Business School, is used in a, in a form in medical school. And, and that began, uh, most people agree, in 1965 at a new medical school in, in Canada, at McMaster University. The whole idea was to put the science of medicine into the context of simulated patient care, uh, as opposed to dry lectures that medical students don't pay much attention to. Um, typically, there's group discussion uh, about the cases. It's very widely deployed in US medical schools with, as you can see, a, a very substantial majority of schools using it. Uh, the pluses are it's been very popular with students and faculty. Um, students do well and sometimes better on clinical evaluations, and they're more likely to go into family medicine, primary care, which we'd like to see more of in the United States. Challenges are it's expensive. Case development and, ma and maintenance, small groups require a lot of instructors. instructors. The discussions in groups may not equally involve all students. And unfortunately, there is as of now, now no evidence of enhanced learning based on standard test scores, whatever they're worth. Um, the problem that, that we chose to address was that here in 2021, it's basically done on paper or PDFs. Students are handed a case in one of these forms. It's linear, they, they start at the top and read to the bottom. There are breakpoints for discussion. Uh, there's no real interactivity. Uh, as you'll see, we've introduced meaningful uh, clinical decision-making as interactivity. Um, there, an opportunity that we see to expose students to digital apps and, and what digital tools can do to help care for patients doesn't exist on paper, but could exist if the whole thing were turned into a smart app platform, which is what we've done. Um, and we also believe that virtualizing case-based learning opens the door to facilitating multidisciplinary training, something that all medical schools say they wanna do, but almost no medical schools are doing. So that young physicians work with young pharmacists and young nurses and learn how to work as a team to take care of patients. So that's a bit of background. I'll turn things over to Ben, who will show you case-based learning on fire. Cheers, thanks a lot, Mark. I'll just share my screen here. Okay, that should be coming through clearly, is it? Great. So what we've got here is the uh, the, the way that presented the students, uh, they will come in and log into this platform that's all got the, the usual um, security controls and they'll pick from any one of their cases. And, and this particular one uh, allows them to um, play a case uh, as a team or as an individual and to revisit their past cases as well. And as Mark has outlined, our, our key intent is to, to try and enhance the pedagogy, to try and enhance the teaching by using this platform uh, and also to weave in uh, critical issues of digital health that become 
so much more important to uh, to these graduates. Uh, certainly our own state here of Queensland, they're rolling out a, a Cernery MR across the state and we, we want to find ways to, to make sure that students graduating from medicine or allied health or nursing uh, know how to use those tools effectively. So this is how cases are presented to students. It's uh, something that looks rather like an EMR in presenting basic information of a patient's history, any medical conditions, physical examination, uh, investigation results, or medications that they may be on. The main way that the students approach the case is they're presented with, with narrative text just here that describes key details of the case. And as they move through a case, they're presented with additional information, additional findings, and also they're presented with questions to, to prompt uh, their thinking about things clinically. They can answer these, they can get feedback, and they can also be uh, presented with embedded multi-choice questions through the case as well. Now these data here that are presented to the students also are populated into the EMR fields of the platform as they progress through and are shown. So that's the, the primary way that the platform operates some of the extra features that are presented to students and, uh, and start to, to put them a bit more in touch with digital health are where in the case, the case populates and presents data on history, investigations, imaging to the students that have been put in there by case author. Uh, it's equally possible for the students to, to add in data themselves. Um, so they can seek investigations, and this is using a, a tool, CSIRO's Monto server, uh, that, that more or less links up uh, SNOMED and, and FIRE uh, to, to put students in touch with clinical terminologies, and, and Jim will be able to talk in more detail about the actual technology. Uh, but it very quickly allows students to search and code in uh, reasons that they are any investigations they're seeking, reasons for doing so and associated notes. And then these appear in the EMR. Uh, so that's for laboratory investigations. Similarly, we've recently added, just to emphasize its importance in healthcare to the students and get them attending to this more regularly, uh, matters of social determinants of health uh, that are coded in again using these tools. And this is where students are starting to use those tools of digital health. And at the back end of this platform, there's a reporting tool that uh, can permit that, uh, that information to be gathered at a class or a cohort level. Um, medications are also supported here. In this case, it's using the Australian Medications Taxonomy, uh, or uh, Rx Norm is what, uh, of course, would be uh, used there in the United States. And this will... quickly search from available medications and allow those to be coded in and added to the platform. In addition to these tools for, for coding and for presenting cases, uh, the platform also supports smart on fire apps. Um, and this has been particularly useful as a teaching tool. Uh, I'm presenting here a couple of apps that uh, were actually developed between uh, IT students uh, at the university in the engineering faculty and interacting with medical students and medical faculty uh, to, to, to incept these apps, to build these apps, and then they're added to the teaching platform and usable. Here we've got an app that um, is one for permitting students to, to note their provisional diagnoses, their differential diagnoses for a possible condition um, and in here, it's again using the same Onto server tool, allowing these things to be added 
uh, they can be shifted in their priority. Notes can be added. And things that are especially dangerous can also be categorised as well. So this is an app that um, has high value for, for capturing some of the key learning students are meant to go through. Another example shown here was one for presenting students with patient reported outcome measures. Uh, so these are a couple of commonly used ones here. If the data is not drawn from uh, the existing patient record, then it can be completed. And then once it's available, the scoring of the questionnaire is done. It's scored against normative data and some basic, basic clinical decision support is shown. Um, a third and final app here is one for trying to support students in mind mapping or structuring their learning uh, around a condition. And they can add here and things that they might be observing. And recording their notes. And of course, they can use these as they're relevant to particular features of the case and then move on through as they progress. When they're finished, they're prompted, they can provide feedback to their teacher and a rating of their understanding of how they're going or also generate a PDF if they wish. So it's requiring students to, to interact with uh, tools of an electronic medical record, with Smart on Fire apps. They're Smart on Fire apps that they can uh, generate themselves. And images and video can also be embedded in cases to enrich these cases. And, and more recently, we're starting to experiment with a, a chatbot app that will uh, allow students to conduct history taking uh, with a virtual sim patient. So, Jim, did you want to uh, discuss further some of the technology behind this? Yeah, thanks, Ben. Um, so, obviously, this is Fire Dev Day, so we're interested in where the fire is in this story. Um, some of it's pretty obvious. Um, when, when you see an EMR like that, it's using fire in all the places you'd expect when you create a condition in, a his, in the history or uh, you enter encounter notes or procedures, observations, including those social determinants that Ben mentioned. Um, the questionnaires that he showed, uh, the diagnostic reports for the, um, for the studies that were being ordered, uh, medication usage and requests in the medications field. All of that is using fire under the hood, as one might expect, um, being sent through to a fire server. The whole player app, is a smart on fire app. So uh, when a student connects to the system, um, they're authenticated and authorized in using smart on fire um, authorization scopes. Um, uh, the, each, each student actually gets their own patient. So when the, the student loads up the case, uh, the patient in the case definition is actually cloned. Um, so we don't have a problem in that case with, with students interfering with each other on the same case. They each get their own copy of the patient. Um, the, the student who's actually using the system has a practitioner ID. So all the actions that they, that they take um, clinically as part of the, the case are recorded in the fire server, along with the times when they did it. Um, and as we scale up to group cases, I think Ben mentioned that a couple of times, we have a care team resource as well, but we'll also track the composition of the care team. Um, I think as well as Ben pointed out, it connects to a fire terminology server, um, in our case, Onto server. So we use SNOMED CT for conditions, procedures, medications in Australia. Um, AMT medications are part of SNOMED CT. Um, and reasons for encounters. Um, we use LOINC for observations and, and the kind of image, the studies that Ben was talking about. Some of the perhaps slightly less obvious place where we use fire, as, as Ben showed, we use we have smart on fire apps. Most of the ones that we use in the cases at the moment have been developed uh, at UQ by the IT students, uh, working alongside the medical students and staff. Um, but that's not that. That's just because the pedagogy works with that. 
um, in terms of using uh, off-the-shelf fire apps, we have done that a little bit with a couple of them, um, where the, the sort of data requirements match up, where the, the coding systems that those apps are expecting to use match up and so forth. Um, so they're standard smart on fire um, apps that we're, we're using. Some of the places where we're using fire that might not be as obvious. Um, we have uh, a bunch of template um, diagnostic reports and observations so that when uh, a case author is putting together a case, they don't have to enter all of the observations each time. If they're just doing a full blood count, they can pull a standard full blood count off the shelf and just change the values. Um, the case, the definition of the case before a student starts using it is um, stored as a fire composition. Um, and then once it's in progress, it's stored as a, fire, as a questionnaire response. So we do use fire right the way under the hood, in, including for the sort of managing the flow of the case um, and all the different possibilities, that, the different avenues that a student might go down as part of that case, the choices that they're presented with, all of that is represented in fire. Uh, so why did we do that? Um, one reason was to keep it realistic. Um, Fire is, sits underneath uh, most of the main EMR products in the market now. So we felt that um, basing our case-based learning on Fire would, would keep us to making our little pretend EMR uh, realistic. Um, it lets us capture data about clinical actions. So all of the actions that the student take through the case um, result in some interaction with the fire service. So if it's a correct choice, it's probably a, a procedure or a condition resource being created or a medication request. Um, if it's a wrong choice, we do send audit events through to the service. So we track what the student's doing. Um, the, the case player doesn't let the student make a wrong choice um, and continue down that path usually. Uh, you, you can author cases that way, but usually you pull them up and say, this is why you wouldn't do that, make another choice. Um, but we do track that with audit events. Um, and it lets us use smart apps. So this um, lets us add functionality that's specific to, to one or more of the cases, um, um, all the benefits that, that have been sold with smart apps generally. So uh, in terms of challenges, um, I'll try to make some time for questions. So uh, the big challenge that we had to deal with uh, with this uh, was dealing with time. So when we author the cases, um, they're, they're going to be played uh, at different times by different students. Um, and we want to be able to progress the case in not real time. So we, we want to be able to say in one trigger, you'll your patient presents himself and in the next trigger, oh, your patient comes back three months later. And this is a real challenge because the, the fire server is expecting us to use real time, but we're using this kind of virtual time. So we, we've had to play some games uh, with how we do time. So all of the, the time elements, date and time elements in the case definition are actually expressed relative to the patient's age, uh, not as absolute time. So that's a, the big challenge that we've had to deal with. Uh, so some of the things we're looking at next, um, we're starting to get into that learning and analytics story. So we've got lots of fine grained data about what students have been doing. Um, and we're looking to start analysing that to start getting some learning analytics. Um, and we, we're looking at using uh, CSIRO's Pathling tool for that. It's an open source fire analytics tool if anyone is interested. As Ben mentioned, we've, uh, we've been working on a chatbot system that simulates virtual patients so that we can, for example, train students, uh, the medical students in history taking um, and save the transcripts of those interactions um, for later analysis. And we're looking at team cases so that we can have students from different clinical disciplines or the same multiple students from the same clinical discipline collaborating, collaborating on cases, playing different um, clinical roles on the case. So that's where we're up to. Um, if you've got, uh, we'll try and answer some questions now. So I'll have a look at the, um, the system. Uh, is the fire server with this realistic test data your students are running available to the public? Um, to be honest, we're just using a happy fire server. Um, we've made a couple of small modifications to support the smart authorization and also to uh, delegate all the terminology calls through to Onto server. But these are standard things that you can do with a happy server. So, um, I mean, yes, it's available. Ha um, it's a happy fire. Um, so it's fairly simple. Um, are there any other questions? I saw uh, one person had their hand raised. Uh, if that's a question, um, I'm happy for you to come off mute and, and ask it. No? 
Well, if, there, if there's not a question, I, I, I Ben, maybe you could just briefly talk about the use of Scott last year during oh, yes, COVID pandemic. Yeah, it's um, it, it, it was a, a helpful tool to pro provide a bit of contingency there. I should emphasise our primary use is to to have this tool to support cases that are conducted in person. Uh, but because feedback can be embedded and questions can be embedded, uh, it, it can also support cases done uh, remotely and independently uh, rather well indeed. And uh, that, that has proved uh, a useful tool to have available uh, during the challenging teaching conditions of the last year. So there's a question there about the chatbot. Um, so the, the chatbot system we're using, we're, we have a chatbot um, that we've developed inside um, CSIRO eHealth Research Centre that we've used in other um, settings, for example, um, working with um, uh, autism, autistic spectrum disorder patients and uh, patients with dementia. Um, and we're just adapting that to use fire at the moment and kind of flipping it because in that case, it's been the patient who's been real and the, the person they're talking to has been virtual and we're flipping that around so that the clinician is real and the patient is virtual. So, uh, but it's the same technology. So it's not, it's not yet a, a available fire chatbot. We're taking an, another chatbot and uh, uh, adapting it to use fire. So it stores all of its transcripts um, using fire and does smart authorization. So it knows who the, who the um, user is that it's talking to. All right, we are actually slightly over time, um, but I just wanna thank you so much for sharing with our audience and thanks to our attendees. And please don't forget to rate the session in Hoobah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, thank you all. Thank you.